Do mobile speed cameras need to capture a picture of the driver's face? There's loads of misinformation about mobile speed cameras. Let's look at the facts and see if the police can get a photo of a driver's face and whether or not they actually need one for the fine to count. When it comes to the specific way in which mobile speed camera vans should operate, there are only really guidelines rather than hard and fast rules that they have to stick to. For instance, many people wrongly believe that camera vans have to be clearly visible to drivers. However, there are no UK laws that state that a camera van must be visible to the motorist. On the whole, speed camera van operators don't usually make themselves hidden because their presence is known to help deter speeding and to help to make the road safer. So you'll usually see a speed camera van off in the distance, if you're paying attention. The choice of where to actually park the van is usually dictated by where accidents have occurred due to people breaking the speed limit. If they end up hidden, it's likely just by chance due to their surroundings rather than an intentional sneaky tactic. Another misconception is that a van can only monitor and enforce speeds on the same side of the road that they're parked on. In reality, it doesn't matter exactly where the van is parked. It can still identify motorists speeding on either side of the road. And some of the new laser systems are able to read your speed from a mile away. And of course, there's the misconception that police need a clear photo of your face whilst driving in order to prosecute. This one came about a number of years ago following a high profile case where a driver got away with a fine by remaining silent and refusing to reveal who was driving at the time. However, since then, road laws have now been adjusted so that it's the registered vehicle owner's duty to identify who was driving at the time. So a mobile camera doesn't need to snap a photo of the driver's face. However, that doesn't mean that it won't do so. Mobile speed vans do take a photo of the speeding vehicle as evidence of speeding. The photo may be of different angles of the vehicle and it can sometimes be a little bit blurry, but if you're approaching from the front, then yes, the picture may well include your face. It's the vehicle registration that the police are trying to photograph as evidence rather than a picture of the driver as it's the registered vehicle owner's responsibility to tell the police who was driving at the time, so the police don't need a picture of who the driver was. The registered vehicle owner informs the police who was driving by returning the form that was attached with the Notice of Intended Prosecution, or NIP form. This form must be completed and returned within 28 days, or it's considered a criminal offence, as is lying about who was driving. Many parents, for instance, have tried to take the fine and points on behalf of their children to avoid the younger driver's insurance from shooting up. In a similar way, couples have often tried to take each other's points when one of them is getting a bit near to a driving ban. However, people have really come a cropper doing this. If the camera did snap a photo of your face, then the correct driver might be quite easily identifiable. If you don't accept the fine and penalty points, you can challenge the speeding ticket in court. However, it can be difficult to win these cases because you only need to be proven to have exceeded the speed limit briefly. You can win a speeding ticket challenge if you weren't the driver, if your car had been stolen, or if your vehicle was mistakenly identified as speeding. In these circumstances, you might find that a speed camera photo that shows you weren't the driver could be a very helpful thing indeed. But be warned, an unsuccessful speeding fine challenge is likely to result in an even bigger fine. If you're thinking that you want to challenge your ticket or that you're worried a fine is about to land you in trouble, then a popular option is to consult a solicitor who can help you out. There's many online solicitors who work out cheaper and easier than meeting in person. Just Answer, for example, only costs five pounds for a trial. One of my colleagues managed to save over 270 pounds on his ticket by using their service. I've linked that offer down in the description and if you use that you'll also be supporting Money Nerd. So thank you.